Vicki Peterson here. We've talked about vitamin D in the past, but it's a very important topic, and recent research has revealed some things that uh, I have not mentioned before in previous videos, so I wanted to make sure that you had all the data regarding vitamin D. Deficiencies in this vitamin are around the world. Billions of people are deficient in vitamin D, and the association with diminished vitamin D compromises bone integrity, the immune system, the link toward cancer is very strong, it can affect heart disease, diabetes, many, many diseases that are affecting us. A recent study uh, said that 30% of all cancer could be reduced by having adequate vitamin D levels, which leads us to what I wanted to bring up. Two major points. One is that vitamin D is best consumed as vitamin D3. In the past, and the recent past, when someone was very deficient in vitamin D, they would give them the vitamin D2 form, sometimes in dosages such as 50,000 international units. That would be given every week for several weeks until the D level had risen. What research shows us is that the vitamin D2 is only absorbed about one-third as well as vitamin D3 and it just doesn't bind to those vitamin D receptor sites the way it should. So vitamin D2 is no longer considered to be the proper type of vitamin D to use when supplementing. So vitamin D3 is the one. Now what recently came out from the British Journal of Medicine is that uh, vitamin D can be interrupted or its ability to be absorbed can be countered by, by how much vitamin A you're consuming. So let's step back and talk about vitamin A for a moment. There's two major forms of vitamin A that we can consume. Uh, retinol, which you'll see if you look at your uh, multiple vitamin bottle, you can see how the vitamin A is being presented to you in that product, whether it's retinol or beta carotene. Now the beta carotene is known as the pre-vitamin A, which is the better form of vitamin A to take because then what happens is your body and your intestine decides how much of that beta carotene it needs to make into vitamin A. So your body gets to decide when you give the beta carotene form. Therefore, it's very difficult to get too much vitamin A when you're taking beta carotene because your body is making the transition. Now, when you take retinol, which is not the pre-vitamin A, but retinol, then what happens is you can get too much, number one, but number two, it's that retinol that competes with and actually influences the ability of vitamin D to be absorbed. So a recent study, as I mentioned, it was this year, 2010, uh, British Medical Journal, found that, and they were looking at vitamin D correlations with colon cancer, and initially the study made a lot of sense. The better the vitamin D, the less likely uh, someone was going to get colon cancer. So that added up quite well with what we know as the benefits of vitamin D. However, as an ancillary sort of find, they realized that the higher the vitamin A from retinol, the less likely someone was going to get benefits and see their vitamin D levels rise. So there's this competition going on. Now, what's another key point is that we're looking at retinol vitamin A in as little as 3,000 international units per day. There are some children's multiple vitamins that have 3,500 international units. We're not talking about a high amount. This is not a mega dose of vitamin A in the form of retinol. It's just the form that we have to look at. So that safer form is definitely the beta carotene versus the retinol. And the last point that I wanted to make is cod liver oil has been uh, what we thought was a wonderful way of getting vitamin D and vitamin A and the omega-3 fatty acids all in one wonderful supplement. However, cod liver oil is a retinol product. So no longer is cod liver oil on the uh, good to use list because of this. So people will take um, their cod liver oil, thinking they're doing the best of both worlds, getting omega-3 fatty acids, D and A, but that A is in the form of retinol, so it's going to compete with that vitamin D. So 
In a perfect world, we'd get our vitamin D from sunlight and we'd get our beta carotene vitamin A from our vegetables. But at least here in the U.S., we are not very good vegetable consumers, number one, and our vitamin D does need some help. So, vitamin D in the form of D3 and your vitamin A in the form of beta carotene, and then you will see those nice changes in your vitamin D that are so critical to your health. So I hope this helps. Please let me know if I can be of any help to you. And until next time, to your very good health.